Hello everybody, this is Dr. Rajal Shah, your guide for urologic pathology related topics. Today in this video, I would like to talk about a contemporary approach to prostate cancer grading. An ideal grading system should have three parameters. Its prognostic ability should exceed clinical parameters. It should be reproducible among pathologies and grading on biopsy should be representative of entire cancer. In order to achieve these parameters, original Gleason system devised by Dr. Gleason in 1967 has now been significantly modified. Two major revisions were uh, introduced in 2005 and more recently in 2014. The resulting modified grading system has important definitional and operational changes. Definitional changes recommend precise definition of each grade and how to grade morphologic variants of prostate cancer, while operational changes recommend how to grade in a special circumstances. In this video, I'm going to talk about the definitional aspect of the prostate cancer. I will cover the operational aspect in a separate video. I would also recommend you to check out a separate video that I have made regarding the pitfalls of Gleason grading that would be a good supplement to the current video. So our rule number one, do not use high power magnification to grade prostate cancer. The Gleason grading is best done at a low to intermediate magnification. If you, you jump to high power to grade a prostate cancer, you are likely going to overgrade the prostate cancer. An important understanding that we have in contemporary practice is that even though pattern one and two theoretically exist, due to its misleading clinical implications, its application in day-to-day -day practice is not recommended. So our rule number two is that Gleason grading essentially starts with pattern three in prostate biopsy specimens. So here is a classic example of Gleason pattern three. You can see variably sized individual discrete glands in an infiltrative pattern. This is the classic Gleason pattern three example. You can essentially draw a circle around each of these glands. However, it is very important to understand the morphologic variations of pattern 3 to avoid mistake regarding overgrading of the Gleason pattern 3. And I will go over each of these particular morphologic variations uh, in individual example forms. So here is an example of an atrophic, also known as a micro acinar Gleason pattern three. Glands are small, but they still have a, a small and atrophic, but they still have a recognizable lumina. So it is very important not to consider this as a poorly formed Gleason pattern four, which I will talk uh, later on. Large Gleason pattern three often results in U shape and Y shape type of branching. It is important not to confuse that as a, an evidence of fusion. Mucinous fibroplasia, also referred to as a collagenous micronodules, which are shown here in form of this uh, intraluminal sometime or in form of an extraluminal uh, eosinophilic secretions or aggregation. This is considered one of the specific feature of the prostate cancer, but that often results in a complex architecture. But when you grade it, you have to remove that from your analysis. So most of the time, mucinous fibroplasia would result into a Gleason pattern three. However, in some examples, it can often create a significantly complex architecture like shown here. So I stay usually still conservative in this type of situation but I would consider giving a minor Gleason pattern four. pin like prostate adenocarcinoma, a morphologic variation that can mimic as high-grade prostatic intraepithelial neoplasia. Here is a nice example. You see this large crowded glands with stratified nuclei. Uh, 
in flat and uh, occasionally tufted type of pattern it is very important that this gland should not have cribriform or papillary morphology to qualify for the diagnosis of pin like adenocarcinoma pin like adenocarcinoma can have based on their nuclear features two forms ductal in which nuclei are elongated and columnar like ductal adenocarcinoma or acinar form in which nuclei are more rounder uh, and more typical like of an acinar form of adenocarcinoma both pin like ductal and acinar forms of adenocarcinoma are given glisten pattern 3 another morphologic variation that can mimic benign prostate is known as pseudo hyperplastic uh, adenocarcinoma here is a nice example of that this is also provided glisten pattern 3 pseudo hyperplastic prostate cancer can also may uh, show you prominent papillary architecture uh, these are more like pseudo papilla rather than a true papillary structure so it is important not to overgrade this as a glisten pattern 4 next we move to glisten pattern 4 glisten pattern 4 is a very heterogeneous morphological pattern composed of several sub patterns and let's go over each of them separately our rule number 3 which was introduced in 2005 modified grading system is that when you have poorly formed glands with barely recognizable lumina and where tangential sectioning is ruled out should be graded as a glisten pattern 4 here is a nice example of poorly formed gland pattern these glands are discrete but very poorly formed you can barely see any lumina within them however this particular definition or recommendation suffers from definitional ambiguity it was not clarified how to grade poorly how to differentiate poorly formed glands from tangential sectioning when cancer glands are cut invariably some glands are going to have a poorly formed gland architecture as shown in this cartoon so keep in mind that when you have few or random seemingly poorly formed glands like this particular example you cannot exclude tangential sectioning and this type of example should be still graded as a pattern 3 and this is especially critical when you are dealing with a small focus of prostate cancer here is a nice example of raggedly infiltrative uh, fused glands here is a nice example of glomerulation which results from intraluminal proliferation of cancerous cells both small and large glomerulations are considered glisten pattern for examples that brings us to our rule number 4 which was a major departure in 2014 system is that now all cribriform cancer irrespective of its size and contour is graded as a glisten pattern 4 or 5 if it is associated with intraluminal necrosis so let us review the spectrum of cribriform glands here is a nice example of small uh, cribriform gland infiltrative uh, glands here is an example of large cribriform which is also referred to as an expansile there are various definitions utilized for a uh, distinction of small from large cribriform glands one definition utilizes when you have more than 12 lumina you should consider that as an expansile cribriform glands here is another example of expansile cribriform glands in a more infiltrative irregular pattern and here is an example of a large or expansile cribriform pattern showing you perineural invasion which is common with this particular pattern in this example you see this cluster of small well formed glands and then you have this surrounding proliferation of this large densely cribriform glands so in this type of situation your differential diagnosis is either uh 4 plus 3 or 3 plus 3 with intraductal carcinoma so basal cell marker p63 was performed in this particular example 
here is a high power view of this large dense cripriform glands and you can see here that small well formed glands lack basal cells but all of these large expansile cripriform glands with dense architecture shows intact basal cells so the diagnosis for this case is gleason score 3 plus 3 equals 6 with extensive intraductal spread and that brings us to our rule number 5 intraductal carcinoma of the prostate is reported but should not be gleason graded but an important thing to remember that in many european studies and in many contemporary literature coming out uh, on this particular area uh, co combines invasive cribriform gleason pattern 4 and intraductal carcinoma as a cribriform architecture a logical choice as both of them are associated with cribriform architecture and both of them are independently associated with adverse outcomes so that brings us to question when to perform basal cell staining to differentiate intraductal carcinoma from cribriform carcinoma i think uh, it is very important not to over utilize basal cell markers basal cell markers should be utilized specifically in two settings when you have lack of definitive infiltrative carcinoma with a suggestion of intraductal carcinoma and in the setting of low grade infiltrative carcinoma where documentation of intraductal carcinoma is necessary to correctly assign gleason score or grade group to the case so it is not recommended in the setting of already high grade prostate cancer where doing basal cells would not really change a grade group in a significant manner ductal adenoma ductal adenocarcinoma characterized by cribriform and papillary morphology showing uh, this stratified columnar type of epithelium is considered classically an example of Gleason pattern 4. If it is associated with the necrosis, you would grade that as a Gleason pattern 5. Papillary pattern can also be seen in a non ductal form. In this particular example, you can see that this particular uh, cancer. Uh, has prominent papillary morphology but the classic columnar stratified epithelium characteristic of ductal differentiation is not present next we move to gleason pattern 5 and again gleason pattern 5 is also quite heterogeneous in morphologies there are several morphologic sub patterns that you should be aware about and let us review each of them here is an example of a sheet-like or large nest growth pattern. You can barely see any glandular differentiation within this. It's made up of almost solid nest. Here is another example. But in this particular example, you see focal glandular differentiation, which is considered uh, acceptable for grading as a pattern 5 if overall you are dealing with a large nest type of pattern here is an example of cord like or cylinder type of pattern in this particular example you see numerous single cells characteristic of a single cell gleason pattern 5 again i would recommend a higher threshold in this type of situation you should not grade 5 based on few single cells or few cords of cells. Here is an example of comedocarcinoma pattern characterized by this intraluminal dirty necrosis with karyorectic debris. In recent studies, it has shown that comedocarcinoma pattern is actually more common with intraductal carcinoma than Gleason pattern 5. But again, you don't need to do basal cells in all situations. Do you utilize basal cells judiciously if you think that it is going to change your grade group in a significant manner. Signet ring cells when seen in a single cells and nest pattern are considered Gleason pattern 5. Our rule number 6 is that certain morphologicals variations should be graded based on underlying architecture 
and that includes example for foamy gland adenocarcinoma mucin secreting adenocarcinoma gland forming adenocarcinoma with penis cell differentiation and tumor showing intracytoplasmic vacuoles so mucin and secreting adenocarcinoma showing lot of extracellular lakes of mucin is no longer a default pattern for you should grade based on underlying architecture so an example like this would be graded as a 3 plus 4 based on some gland showing uh, fusion pattern here is a well formed foamy gland example you can see discrete glands with cells lining abundant foamy or xanthomatous cytoplasm and small pycnotic nuclei and another morphological variation which can easily be confused with the benign condition here is an example of high grade foamy carcinoma which can mimic as xanthoma cells but note the nuclear atypia in difficult cases you may need cd68 and cytokeratin to confirm your diagnosis but this example would be graded as a 4 plus 4 equal 8 in this example, you see gland forming adenocarcinoma with this uh, uh, eosinophilic bright penis cell like neuroendocrine differentiation. So, several studies have shown that there is no special significance to this particular pheno neuroendocrine phenomenon. So, when you see that in gland forming units, you should grade based on the underlying architecture. Our final rule is that certain morphologies are not proglycan graded due to its therapeutic implications and this particular rule applies to small cell neuroendocrine carcinoma basal cell carcinoma and squamous and adenosquamous carcinoma and i have an example of this small cell high grade neuroendocrine carcinoma you can see nuclei with salt and pepper chromatin numerous mitotic activities showing highly proliferative tumor classic oat cell or small cell carcinoma features so when you see this do not provide the grade only grade if there is a component of conventional acinar differentiation because these tumors are given platinum based chemotherapy due to its specific therapeutic implications so this slide is from our book and shows you a a flow chart of how to approach a contemporary grading to prostate cancer you can uh, check out uh, that particular chapter so with that note i thank you for your attention